On Monday, we took a look at the mathematical shape on a graph one would get if one accelerates from rest. One gets on the graph an ever-increasing velocity, a shape called a parabola. A parabola described by d1 is approximately equal to 1 half at1 squared. Today we're going to look at the arc of a ball. Take a look at the path of the ball across that poster pad. This is a rough sketch of that path, not very precise, but you can see that the ball roughly follows that. It's a little bit more pointed maybe, but it's close to that path. That path, we'll find, is also a parabola. Let's attach some numbers to this parabola. I'm using a meter stick here. That's going to be my x-axis right there. And that center line is my y-axis. So I've got two roots, one at 22.5 negative, one at 22.5 positive. And I have a vertex sitting on the y-axis at 33 centimeters. Here's that equation plugged into Desmos. And I'll now animate the ball on the equation. We'll come back to how to build that equation later. But you can see that my ball bounces from one root at negative 22.5 up to the vertex at 0, 0,33 down to the right root at 22.5. I've centered this parabola on the y-axis so the roots are equal distant left and right. Those are the two roots at the bottom x-intercepts or roots, sometimes called the solutions to the equation. This is the same shape, but turned upside down, as the equation we met on Monday. The d1 is approximately at, half, 1 half at squared. This is y equals negative x squared plus a constant, the vertex height. And so it's the same quadratic equation underneath, or a quadratic equation structure underneath that yields these two shapes. If you wanted to make your own, you'll need to create this particular graph. You, However you wanted to do it, you could really roughly estimate it, and get your distance to your roots, that's j, I'll call that j, and I'll call the height 33 to the vertex k. And then set up Jesmos like, the, like this. j is 22.5, that's my distance to the root. Plus and minus, doesn't matter. K is 33, and below that you can see I've written an equation. Y equals negative KX squared over J squared plus K. If you set this up, you can model your own ball arc. You'll need to roughly estimate your measurements. You probably won't have poster pad, but you'll be able to do it. The acceleration of a ripstick and the arc of a ball are both governed by quadratic equations equations that generate parabolas. The mathematics that connects these two systems together is the same mathematics. It is a mathematics that tells us what a system will do in the physical world and allows us to predict where a ball will be. I can run and juggle because the ball will be where a mathematical equation predicts the ball will be, allowing me to catch it. I'm not actually watching my catches. I'm watching where I'm going when I'm running and juggling. One has to watch where one is going. So it is the mathematical equations that are governing the flight of the ball that makes running and juggling possible. The same equations describe the acceleration of the ripstick. And the same equations will let us measure other accelerations. The laboratory will look at the acceleration of gravity. How fast an object falls by timing a falling object will be able to determine the acceleration of gravity. And so it is a math that ties the systems together. It is a math that makes physical science systems behave in a predictable way. And that's why math is one of the themes inside this course. Different systems, things that look very different, such as running and juggling or accelerating a ripstick, are both connected by the quadratic equations that govern the systems. As I run, each ball is making an arc, an arc through the air that's described by a quadratic equation. It's a para parabolic shape, and this is what 
policy systems together.